Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this 18th episode of the Southern Conservative Podcast. My name is Ty. I apologize for not doing a podcast yesterday. I was on the road back to South Carolina, and frankly, I was exhausted when I got home last night. I'm not usually that tired, so I skipped out yesterday, but I'm back today and ready to go. We have a lot to get into. I want to tie up some loose ends on the Susan Rice email from Monday. I had read an article from Ben Shapiro on Monday about the email, but I want to offer you my thoughts as well. Before we start, here's the email she sent to herself in the final moments of the Obama administration on January 20th, 2017. On January 5th, following a briefing by IC leadership, that would be intelligence community leadership, on Russian hacking during the 2016 presidential election, President Obama had a brief follow-on conversation with FBI Director Jim Comey and Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates in the Oval Office. Vice President Biden and I were also present. President Obama began the conversation by stressing his continued commitment to ensuring that every aspect of this issue is handled by the intelligence and law enforcement communities by the book. The president stressed that he is not asking about initiating or instructing anything from a law enforcement perspective. He reiterated that our law enforcement team needs to proceed as it normally would by the book. From a national security perspective, however, President Obama said he wants to be sure that, as we engage with the incoming team, that would be Trump's team, we are mindful to ascertain if there is any reason that we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. The president then asked Comey to inform him if anything changes in the next few weeks that should affect how we share classified information with the incoming team. Comey said that he would. Now first, why would Susan Rice feel the need to memorialize an event that occurred 15 days prior? Remember, she wrote this email on January 20th about a meeting that occurred on January 5th. It seems to me that if you want to summarize a meeting, you either do it while the meeting is going on, or you do it immediately afterward while it's still fresh in your mind. Second, why did Rice feel the need to mention that law enforcement and intelligence communities need to conduct themselves by the book? And she mentioned it twice. Seems a bit odd, doesn't it? Well, combine this with a report that came out yesterday in the Daily Caller and has since been repeated in different news outlets today, that Comey never revealed this information when he was testifying before the Senate Intelligence Committee on June 8, 2017. Now, let's be clear. Comey did not lie to the committee. In his testimony, he said he only met Obama, quote, alone twice, once in 2015 and once in late 2016. From this email, he was meeting with the president, along with Vice President Joe Biden, Susan Rice, and Sally Yates. But Comey never willfully told the intelligence community about this meeting on January 5th, which raises the question, how many more times did Comey meet with the president to discuss the Russian investigation? Did Comey discuss the dossier with Obama? Add to this another detail. Susan Rice wrote this email to herself on January 20th. What happened one day prior, on January 19th? The FBI was successful at reauthorizing a FISA warrant to spy on Carter Page. Now, isn't that just perfect timing? Susan Rice's email also mentions about the FBI possibly informing the president that classified information may not be able to be shared with the incoming administration. First, there's no way to withhold classified information from the president, He's privy to all classified information. But why would the FBI or the Obama administration feel the need to withhold classified information about the Russian investigation from Trump and his team, unless it was Trump and his team that were under investigation? This email was about a meeting that took place on January 5th. Two weeks later, on January 19th, the FISA court granted a new FISA warrant, and Rice writes about this email about the January 5th meeting the very next day. I'm telling you folks, this email is solely meant to protect Barack Obama. The question now is, what all did Obama know? When did he know it? Who is he talking to? I'm sure more on this will unravel in the coming days, weeks, and months. But the important thing to take away 
is we know Obama was in on the Russian investigation. We now need to know what extent he was made aware of what all was going on. And folks, it's not a big of a jump to make to get from where we are today to Obama knowing full well about the dossier and the FBI's efforts to obtain FISA warrants to spy on Carter Page. In fact, I don't see how the president wasn't made aware of those facts. A bombshell article was published on Sunday by Paul Sperry at Real Clear Politics, summarizing what is believed to be Phase 3 of the Devin Nunes investigation in the House Intelligence Committee. Recall that Phase 1 was looking to how the FISA warrants relied on the dossier. Phase 2 is about the State Department's involvement in that. Phase 3 is looking at the intelligence community. And several people under the microscope include John Brennan, the former CIA director, and James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence. I'll post the link to Sperry's article in the description section. You can also find a link to the article on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash southernconservative. The article is too long to read verbatim for this podcast, so I'll summarize the points made by Sperry. He says that Devin Nunes and the House Intelligence Committee will be looking into how Brennan and Clapper and others, including Samantha Power, Susan Rice, and Leon Panetta, advanced the dossier narrative. The committee will also investigate whether Brennan lied in May 2017 to the House Intelligence Committee. During that hearing, he denied the dossier was used by the intelligence community to conclude that Russia had meddled in the 2016 election. Brennan also said he did not know who commissioned the dossier, despite the FBI knowing in 2016 that the dossier was funded by Hillary Clinton and the DNC. According to Sperry, several Capitol Hill sources say that Brennan, a fiercely loyal Obama appointee, talked up the dossier to Democratic leaders as well as the press during the 2016 campaign. They say he also fed allegations about Trump-Russia contacts directly to the FBI, while pressuring the Bureau to conduct an investigation of several Trump campaign figures starting in the summer of 2016. Sperry writes that, quote, On August 25, 2016, Brennan gave an unusual private briefing to then-Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid, in which he told Reid that Russians were backing up Trump and that the FBI would have to take the lead in an investigation because the FBI is the federal agency in charge of domestic intelligence, and unlike the CIA, the FBI can spy on U.S. citizens. Two days after Brennan's special briefing, Reid fired off a letter to then-FBI Director James Comey, demanding that he open an investigation targeting individuals tied to Trump to determine if they coordinated with the Russian government to influence our election. One of those individuals tied to Trump was Carter Page. And we know that two months later, the FBI got a FISA warrant to spy on Carter Page. But there's more with Harry Reid. According to Sperry, unsatisfied with the progress of Comey's investigation, Reid released an open letter to the FBI chief in late October 2016, accusing him of sitting on evidence. Reid told Comey that from his communications with, quote, Other top officials in the national security community, it has become clear that you possess explosive information about close ties and coordination between Donald Trump, his top advisors, and the Russian government, a foreign interest openly hostile to the United States, which Trump praises at every opportunity. Congressional investigators say that the explosive information Reid referred to was the false or unverified claims in the Clinton-funded dossier which the sources say were passed along by John Brennan. They add that Brennan gave more than one briefing. So Brennan is believed to be behind information given to Democratic lawmakers on Capitol Hill, including Harry Reid, so those lawmakers could put pressure on the FBI to look into Carter Page and Trump's campaign for possible Russian collusion. Now here's probably the most damning part of Sperry's article. Quote, In early January 2017, just weeks before Trump was inaugurated, investigators say Brennan saw to it that the contents from the dossier were attached to an official daily intelligence briefing for Barack Obama. The special classified briefing was then leaked to the major Washington media, allowing them to use the presidential briefing to justify the publication of claims they had up to that point not been able to substantiate and had been reluctant to run. 
So let's put all of this together with what we already know. We know that, according to Susan Rice, there was a meeting on January 5, 2017, involving Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Sally Yates, James Comey, and Susan Rice herself. They talked about conducting an investigation, quote, by the book, and felt that they may not be able to share classified information with the Trump administration. So where does Brennan fit into all of this? We'll just piece together Brennan putting the dossier into an intelligence briefing to Obama, and then Obama meeting with top DOJ and intelligence officials. This all suggests that Obama damn well knew about the dossier. We still have to make the jump as to whether Obama knew that the dossier was used to obtain FISA warrants. But again, folks, that's not a big of a jump to make. Obama had to have known that the FBI was using that information. Further, Sperry mentions how Brennan's classified briefing was leaked to the media. Well, how the hell, folks, is that not a crime? But remember, the press knew about the dossier allegations, but were sitting on the information because they could not verify the information themselves. So it was never published, until CNN broke the story about the dossier, and BuzzFeed published the dossier in full. Sperry writes further, In public testimony, Brennan said the dossier and its sources were not credible enough to incorporate the information in a separate January 2017 intelligence report on Russian election interference publicly released by the administration. The published unclassified version of the report nonetheless echoes the dossier's central assertion that Moscow meddled in the election in order to help Donald Trump. Brennan later swore the dossier did not in any way factor into the CIA's assessment that Russia interfered with the election to help Trump. However, congressional investigators suggest the still classified version of the 2017 intelligence report contradicts that claim. Also, in his May 2017 testimony, Brennan swore he had no idea who commissioned the dossier. So we're to believe that Brennan knows all about this dossier, except who funded it. Really? Sources say Brennan is aware that the House Intelligence Committee is targeting him in its wide-ranging investigation of the dossier and investigative and intelligence abuses related to it and that Nunes plans to call him and other foreign Obama administration officials before the panel to question them based on newly obtained documents and information. Sperry goes on to mention how Brennan recently signed a contract to be the senior national security and intelligence analyst for NBC and MSNBC. Well, surprise, surprise. And Brennan has already used his new platform to bash Nunes, and no doubt he'll continue to do so. Nunes apparently is also investigating or will be investigating James Clapper, former director of national intelligence. He joined Brennan in giving Obama a two-page summary of the dossier memos during the presidential briefing in January 2017. Days later, Clapper expressed profound dismay at the leaks that have been appearing in the press and misleadingly referred to the dossier as a private security company document. Clapper is dismayed by the leaks appearing in the press? Did he not know that it was CIA Director Brennan leaking to the press and leaking to lawmakers on Capitol Hill? Not to mention that Christopher Steele himself was leaking to the press. Well, Brennan is the same man who claims not to have known who funded the dossier. Folks, this is just incredible. Sperry goes on to write, In October 2016, during the heat of the campaign, Clapper issued a public report declaring that Russian President Vladimir Putin's regime directed the cyber attacks on Clinton campaign emails, echoing memos Steele was delivering at the time to the Clinton campaign. A year later, after it was finally revealed in the national media that Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Democratic National Committee funded the research that went into the notorious dossier, Clapper insisted, quote, it doesn't matter who paid for it. Are you kidding me? It doesn't matter that Hillary or the DNC paid for what amounts to Russian lies and propaganda from within the Russian government about the person she's running against for president in 2016. And the fact that the information was used to obtain a FISA warrant against someone involved in Trump's campaign. And it doesn't matter who funded that information. It's what the dossier said and the extent to which it was corroborated or not. And we had some concerns about it from the standpoint of its sourcing, which we could not corroborate, Clapper added in his October interview with CNN. 
He went on to strongly suggest that the intelligence assessment report he issued with Brennan, which concluded the Kremlin not only hacked the Democratic campaign, but did so specifically to put Trump in the White House, was based on some of the substantive content of the dossier. But at the same time, some of the substantive content, not all of it, but some of the substantive content of the dossier, we were able to corroborate in our intelligence community assessment from other sources, which we had very high confidence of, Clapper said. Investigators say Nunes intends to drill down on exactly what those other sources are now that his committee has learned that top officials at both the FBI and the Justice Department relied on a Yahoo News article as their additional sourcing to corroborate the dossier allegations they cited to obtain Trump campaign wiretap warrants, even though, it turns out, the main source for the Yahoo News story was merely the dossier's author, Christopher Steele, who was disguised as a Western intelligence source. So it's possible in the intelligence community assessment of Russian interference in our election that they may have been using claims in the dossier written by Christopher Steele and backing up those claims with media reports in which information was passed along by Steele. They may have done the same thing the FBI did in trying to corroborate the dossier by using a source with information provided by the dossier's author. There is no corroboration. And if that's the case, then the intelligence community never corroborated the claims of Russian interference. So the bottom line, folks, is that this supposed Phase 3 of the Nunes investigation has the potential to be explosive. But now, we know it's not just the FBI, Hillary and her associates, the DNC, Perkins Coy, Fusion GPS, Christopher Steele, and the State Department behind efforts to compile memos and dossiers in an attempt to get FISA warrants to spy on Trump. Other members in the intelligence community, including Brennan and Clapper, may have played roles as well. Folks, this scandal seems to be getting bigger every day. I want to remind everyone to please check out the Facebook page. Go to facebook.com slash southernconservative. That's facebook.com slash southernconservative. Please like the page and follow the news feed. You'll find links posted every day to stories you may not hear about in the mainstream media. Plus, if you follow the news feed, you'll find links to the daily podcasts. Be sure to also subscribe to this YouTube channel. You'll be notified each time a podcast is posted. Remember, podcasts are posted daily, Monday through Thursday. I want to end with a story on Michael Flynn. You'll recall that back on December 1st, 2017, Flynn pled guilty to lying to the FBI. Well, news broke yesterday that Peter Strzok, one of the FBI agents who interviewed Flynn back in January 2017, and former FBI Director James Comey, who testified in March 2017, both indicated Flynn did not lie to the FBI. Now, this information is not new, and there were reports on the day Flynn pled guilty that Comey knew Flynn did not lie. So the question remains, why did Flynn plead guilty? We still don't know the answer to this, but I do want to throw around some ideas that I have. Flynn was interviewed last year on January 24th. This would have been five days after the FBI was able to get the FISA warrant against Carter Page reauthorized. We know the investigation was all about going after Donald Trump and trying to get to the bottom of the Trump-Russia collusion. Well, the investigation gets taken over by Robert Mueller and his special counsel team in May 2017. Now, the investigation was turned from a counterintelligence investigation to a criminal investigation. And to have prosecutors walk away from an investigation without charging someone is never heard of. Prosecutors are in the job of prosecuting. And when you look at some of the prosecutors on Robert Mueller's team, including Andrew Weissman, who will do whatever it takes to get a conviction, there's no doubt that they want to see someone go to prison, but their main target all along has always been Donald Trump. I surmise that Flynn was a way to get to Donald Trump. I'm sure that they could have threatened to continue investigating Flynn and everything he did in his past. And we know that Flynn kept fighting these investigations to the point where he went flat broke. It's expensive to keep funding a legal team. So Flynn pleads guilty to get the whole thing over with, even if he really didn't do anything wrong, in order to protect his family and what little money the man had left. 
And of course, it's a win-win for Mueller's team. Mueller gets a guilty plea, and then he can use Flynn as a way to go after Donald Trump. Now, that's just my hypothesis, and maybe one day we'll find out all the answers to all of this. Well, folks, that does it for today. I'll be back tomorrow for another podcast. Have a great day, everybody.